Hello and welcome. My name is Troy Penson and I will be doing an interview today with Pauline Grappentin. Uh, just to run over the necessities, uh, if you want to catch this or send it to your friends and they want to watch in replay, go to mytimetv.live and uh, they will be able to watch or select any other ones that are in there uh, to view. Don't go away where I was. I don't know what happened there. I must have pressed the little um, camera button at the top. Sorry about that. And if you want to, please get on to your friends, share with your friends and family, put it on Facebook, let people know that we are doing these interviews. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to call up Pauline and we'll have a bit of a chat. Hi, Pauline. Morning, Roy. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you, and um, hopefully today we can get through without too much of a technical hassle. Yes, that'd be great. That'd be great, wouldn't it? <coughs> now, last week we went over um, sort of the early part of your career, yeah. and um, hopefully some of the people that might have watched in replay have... Uh, I actually had a couple of people on the weekend asking about... Uh, how they could expand their um, spiritual knowledge and get into me uh, mediumship. Now, I know I put them on to um, Lidwina. Yeah, I think you know Lidwina, don't you? Yep. Yeah. Well, I put, put them on to her because she does a six-week sort of enhancement course. But if, they, if somebody's interested, could they talk? To you, or is there a way that they can contact you if they're interested in being mentored by somebody that is already a medium? I've already um, have spoken to a few people through Messenger and and guided them through um, what they needed to do. But I, I find that a lot of people think that spirit controls you, but you actually have control over spirit, and you can tell them what you want to hear, what you want to, how you want things to happen rather than them controlling you. Mm. Morning, Annette. And Annette's, yeah, Annette's sending her famous messages through. She, I'd like to know where she finds all these emoticons. I, I have trouble trying to get them up as, as quickly as what she does. So. Messy job. When you have practice. Yeah, I wish I could get on Facebook that often to practice. No, that's not going to happen. Um. Now you were at the at the uh, Flinders Street Market on the weekend. There's a question: Did anybody happen to mention that they seen you on um, the live video the week before? Uh, no, actually, no one did. Because I know there was supposed to be one of them that was coming back to see you, and I don't know whether you answered her by SMS or something, but she was going to come down and see you and try and get a reading with you. So. I actually did it for her online because I didn't get a chance last week to answer a couple of people. Oh, so after that, yeah, I actually yeah. went online and actually answered them privately because I felt, yeah. Um, yeah, I felt bad about them not getting their answers and I didn't want them to have to wait another week. Yeah, it's it's good if you can do that and get back on it. I think it, it sort of sets the precedent that um, you're interested in their attention and they're more likely to come back as a client later. Yep. Hi, Sue. Lovely to see you on board. Um, we also have Hannah Simmons on this morning. Morning. How are you? If you've got a question that you would like to put to Pauline, please type it in the comments and we will put it up there so that Pauline has a chance to read it and answer it. <coughs> um, after last week, we <laughs> we're holding out uh, very quietly for a good morning 
and no technical difficulties. Um, if you would like a uh, one question uh, reading from Pauline, then please, uh, if you can, type it in capital so I know you're after reading, or just type read and then type what it is that you want to ask. But try to be a little bit specific about it. Uh, we don't have to guess. Um, <clears throat> so how did you sort of find the energy at the spiritual fair on the weekend? Well, part of it on Saturday was a little bit, I found the energy Saturday and Sunday very different. The clientele that came in Saturday, they were a bit like a lot more confusion and not understanding what they wanted and where they were going. And it was, mm. and they were kind of like blocking a little bit, so it was harder to tune into their energy. But on the Sunday, it was really, I started at 10 o'clock and just, it was easy right from the point go because everyone knew what they wanted and had. Mm just wanted answers to a few questions or verification of what they were thinking or wanting to do, which they got. So it worked out quite well. Wonderful. Um, you mentioned in there that like there's um, a bit of indecision from the person coming up. Uh, how does that sort of change the way that you do the reading? Sue, I'll get to you in a minute, love, um, with the reading and we'll do one for you. But I'd just like to get Pauline to answer that question if you can. Um, sometimes, you know, I get them to take a couple of deep breaths and, and try and relax because if they're coming in and they're really tense and they're feeling anxious, it's harder to connect with them energetically. And, you know, then it's just like I just find it a bit harder, but I actually do actually eventually connect to them. But it's just about sometimes I actually even send them some Reiki while I'm sitting there mm. just to try and calm them down a bit because once they relax, it's easier to see, hear, and pick up what's going on in their lives. But if they're tense, it's a lot harder to um, connect to them. Yeah. So do you connect with their guides or are you tuning into just the energy that they're bringing? Well, when I first um, start with people, I usually tune into their energies and then I usually mm. get them to put their hands face up on the table mm. And I connect to them that way so that even if they are a bit tense, that they're getting some healing energy to help them relax into that situation, which is a lot easier. And then I just go from then. I get messages from their guides. I sometimes, not always, but sometimes I can connect with their loved ones um, that are passed over. Sometimes they just, I just can't connect to them. They're just not there. But um, usually they get messages or guidance along which way they need to go in their life or what's not working for them. Well, that's uh, really answer. Really answer. Oh, do you have earphones at all here, um, Pauline? No, I don't. Do I need them? All right. No, I'm just getting a bit of feedback, that's all. Um, we have Sue Bromley on and she would like to know if you could do a read on her. Can you see a picture there? Yeah, I can. Is she having problems with her digestive system? I'm That's picking up. We're waiting. Or is it to do with um, anxiety with her? I just feel it all in my stomach area and through my um, lower stomach that it feels like that she's having some digestive problems or that she's a bit anxious about some things that she needs to change in her life. Okay, that's a good start for the morning. You can come back with that one, Sue, and let us know how close that was. Uh, well, your friend Annette is going, she's always wants a reading woman, so see how you go, Annette. She just wants me to pick up something on her. Yeah, what she's a asking? little read, read, please. Yeah, to see what you can pick up. All right. Okay. With Annette, I'm feeling some blockages in the throat, like that she's really good at talking about what she, what she wants other people to hear, but she actually keeps a lot of stuff personally to herself, and with Annette. It's what she doesn't say that is more relevant than what she does say. 
Ooh, so it's about her, learning to, it's about her learning to speak her own truth. And, you know, sometimes our truth and our beliefs are different to other people's. And I find that it's easier to say, well, in my world I do this, so that way I'm not offending anybody else. So it's my interpretation of how I actually get through things. Yeah, you're basically saying this is this is me. I don't yeah. care what your your thoughts are. These are my yeah. thoughts and I'm gonna stick with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um we've got an answer know. back from Sue and she says yes, she's anxious about what to do with her work. Okay. So does she do spiritual work or um physical work is she talking about? I can only go as fast as they talk on me. Okay. Um, if you have a question, please, can we have a question? Um, read tells me so that you need the reading. With Sue, I'm um, picking up that that um, her work is going to be very successful for her, that she's in control about what happens in her experience with her work and that she needs to just put that foot forward and take her own personal power back to be able to control what she needs to control without being bossy about it. Mm. Okay, we've got a response from Annette. She says, thank you, spot on. Um, and we have another woman here, Hannah, Hannah Simmons. She would like to know if she can get a reading as well. I can't see her face, but I can pick up her energy. Um, I actually feel that apart from her painting there, she is a very creative woman but I feel that she has a few blockages around that area and that if she actually could do some meditation or out in the nature or out or somewhere quiet that she would or have some music on that actually uplifts her a bit more that she will her art style will change a lot differently to what it is now it's her mind that actually takes her wandering in different positions or different situations and that she needs yeah. to stand her and do what she needs to do for herself because her artwork we got a needs response. To... oh sorry we got a response from sue just saying that she does different things but it's not really spiritual or physical okay i'm 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 at a loss there because you're either doing something which is spiritual or you're, or you're doing something which is physical so, um I, i'm intrigued sue uh, what sort of work do you do would she have heard my response from before to her yeah, yeah, that's why she put it. I put it up there that she didn't do spiritual or. Yeah, well, I know. But I also felt that she would be successful if she actually took her power mm. back and did what she needed to. Mm. With your uh, particular style of reading, which do you sort of um, enhance with uh, Reiki or is it. Um, smells like oils and stuff or crystals or do you combine all of them together i actually use um quintessences um that i that i use every time i work with someone i actually use a quintessence to help get myself into that zone and i actually do use reiki and i do have crystals with me so i actually use the whole lot so when i do crystal healing if i find it um, people are finding it difficult to do inner child work or um, to look at some of the issues that are deep within them. I will actually use the Reiki to enhance the crystal he crystal healing to actually help them drop into the energies that they need to release what they're releasing. I also have done inner child work as well with people. And sometimes I can actually, when I'm one-on-one, -on -one, I can pick up that there's some inner child stuff that needs to be sorted and help them through that. That probably explains why I'm seeing so many stuffed toys at the back of you, you know, the inner child. Yes, I have people come sometimes and they're very distressed and they like to cuddle my bears, my big teddy yeah, bears. Alex, they are absolutely cute. I love that. That's cute. Yeah. We'll do an interview and these are real next week. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that I use for absentee Reiki and this is the one oh, right. that everybody cuddles when they get here. So we have two big bears. <laughs> yeah, two and big care bears. Yeah. 
and the grandkids love coming in this room and they pick up all my crystals and they cuddle all my bears because it's something that they don't have at home. Like they have bears at home but not like mine are really soft and squishy where some of theirs are not as soft and squishy and they love picking up the crystals and looking at them. They think they're really pretty. Yeah. I was looking at a couple of children yesterday um, at the market and they were at Andy's store, the crystals uh, uh, that were alongside of And um, basically the the children are only probably five or six and they're picking up the clear quartz and they're putting it straight to the the crown um the third eye chakra and yeah. look mum i'm i'm getting better now and they're putting them back in and then the next one comes along and did exactly the same thing and i'm thinking where was i when you know this was going on this is all happening now i've lost all this god so, um, yeah the kids these year um the younger kids now are loving the crystals and that and you know i've heard that sometimes the parents saying i don't be silly it's just a rock you know, or you know, something stupid about that, but they are they are have a lot of um, healing abilities. We look at back in the war times, they used to use crystals in the radios and stuff like that to be able to transmit energy and to transmit that radio frequency through, and they and they use the crystals. Yeah. You know, people can't dispute that they don't have any powers or energy to transmit because. Yeah. That's used to use in the original days yeah we have a response from sue she says wondering whether to do meditation teaching and yes she did hear your response so she will probably take that under advisement um yeah. we have colleen simmons who says she'd love some advice about uh with the business and work if that's possible okay so she runs her own business is that what she's uh, saying? That seems to be what she's saying. I'd love some advice with my business and work. Okay. So there you go. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, I actually feel that there's a lot of emotional stuff going on with um, Colleen at the moment and that she is unsure about where she wants to go and what she wants to do but i'm also feeling that um she needs to be a little bit more grounded in her business and look at it from a different perspective to what she's working on now and the other thing is too that she's got to work out in her own mind what she wants to do because i feel there's a little bit of confusion that she's trying to look at all these different ways to make extra money for herself and that she needs to be an expert in one thing rather than trying to be uh, an expert in lots of little things and not actually keeping it to what she needs it to be. Hmm, jack of all trades, master of none. That's right. And that's what I'm mm. feeling. She's wanting to try and bring that income in, but mm. she's trying to clasp at lots of straws instead of just one. Uh, also, we had one from Hannah that said, thank you, that was spot on, so that's good. And okay. Annette has decided that she's going to a friend's house and will watch the replay, so make it good for her. She'll probably get her answer uh, when she gets home, knowing that. Yeah. Anybody who knows Annette will know she has a pile of crystals and she is a mile-a-minute woman. So, a wonderful woman, but she's just a mile-a-minute. Um... I'm not sure where I want to go. Um, anything come to your mind that you want to pass on at the moment while I try and think of some questions to get you through? Um, no, no, not really. I, the only thing is that, you know, I, I'm trying to get um, a few more things at, done for myself. And I've just, mm. after this week, I'll, be, I'll get my accreditation in crystal healing which is awesome because I just had to um, do stuff on some clientele and just got to write their assignments up and send it off. And I've just also got my accreditation in hypnotherapy and because I really just want to work with um, Reiki crystals and hypnotherapy and because I want to combine the hypnotherapy and Reiki and crystals together so that mm. it actually enhances all that rather than just do the hypnotherapy on its own. 
And yeah, so I just love my work. And since my um, my granddaughter's moved out, I've just I've taken over this room of hers and repainted it and just made it my own little retreat for the work that I do. And I just Your own enjoy, little sacred place. Yes, and I just love what I do and I enjoy helping people. And for me, it's not always about the money, but that's nice. But it's always about trying to help someone. And I don't always um, charge if someone has just one question to ask, especially if they've had a reading before. Um, but, right. yeah, I just enjoy helping other people. Yeah. Um, I, I, as you know, I do Reiki myself. And yep. um, I, I've got like five or six, six different um, crystal wands that I use. It makes a heck of a difference, and if you've got the right crystal with it. So, what sort of crystal healing are you doing? Um, I do uh, like I do um, th three different courses in crystals. I do crystal healing on a basic level for people that are beginners, and then I do mm. advanced crystal healing. And I, then I actually have um, taught Reiki one and two, but then um, people can actually come in later and do uh, Reiki 1 with crystal healing or Reiki 2 with crystals. So I actually combined the Reiki and the symbols that we get through with the crystals, mm -hmm. which enhances the energy a lot more than what, I, than what just using the crystals on its own does. Uh, you don't plan on changing the name of the Reiki, do you? No, not really. Why? Uh, it just seems to me that every time somebody comes up with uh, an extension of, of taking Reiki and adding something to it. They give it a different name. Seishim yeah. and all the others. They're just yeah. the basic Reiki, but they've added something to them. And in order to make it sound more fantastic or a different thing that's really different, they give it a different name. And to me, it's just giving the same name to a different cat, you know. Yeah. It's the same as, like, uh, you know, Reiki with crystals, Reiki one with crystals, or Reiki two with crystals. So I leave it at that. If because um, mm. I only teach Reiki clients um, the Reiki with crystals because I don't treat normal like, people that just done crystals with Reiki because you don't because they haven't been tuned into that energy. But you know, I I have a similar. You have that belief about Reiki. Everyone just adds to it. I have a belief that you know people go God or whatever. But, you know, it all comes from the same source, but every culture has a different name for it. You know, it just depends on which side of the universe you're born in is whether it's called universal energy, God. I know the Indians sometimes, sometimes say Baba, and, you know, there's all these different names for these gods, but it all comes from the one place, and we just have all different yeah, names. Yeah. yeah, that's fair enough. I'm, I'm probably being terribly pedantic about it. Um, it just seems that if you, uh, I, I've done seven rays, I've done rainbow rays, and I've done Reiki. Yeah. And if I'm doing Reiki, I'm calling it Reiki. You know, I'm not yeah. calling it say Shin or or something else. No, I right. don't need. And that's it. That's the part that I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I'm the same. I'm not going to change my names of everything I do. I, it's just Reiki to me, and you can enhance it with crystals if you want to and add it to you there, but if they don't want to do it, they don't have to. It's their choice, really, at the end of the day. Yeah. So you're teaching only those people that do Reiki already, the crystal aspect? Yeah. Or if they do their one with me and they come back later, they do the, they get the crystals. And I don't charge them a lot of money to do the crystals after that. So what, give us a clue on what you, your prices are like for your courses. Okay. So when I do um, Reiki 1, it's $200 for the weekend and Reiki 3 is 300 for the weekend. If I do crystal healing and um, with Reiki 1, I usually charge $80 for the day. And um, mm. and for, the, and for um, Reiki 2, it's the same with crystals, so $80. The day, the eighty dollars is just for the crystals. Yeah, with Reiki, if they're Reiki channels, mm. yes. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good. Uh, I just wanted to, to find out what the price is in case somebody's looking in and wants to uh, just thinking about doing Reiki. 
Um, they lock up the people, you know, that want to do Reiki and they don't have the money and they pay it off before they even get to the class, you know, $20 a fortnight or something like that. I've had quite a few that have done that, so I'm quite willing because I know what it's like. Sometimes you really want to do something and the money's not there that they can just yeah. pay it off. They do direct debit for so many weeks and then I arrange yeah. that to be, you know, like we let's all get together now and do it. Yeah. Do you not have ever... anything coming up at the moment? Pardon? Yeah, I'm do actually... Do you have anything coming up at yeah. the moment? I'm actually looking at uh, running a Reiki one in October. I just haven't chosen the date yet. I've got a few people interested. But it's the same thing. If they can't afford it, they can pay it off. Um, I've just changed this over. Go down to here. And press that. if you're interested in this or you're watching on replay, contact Pauline on the Facebook page. Leave her a message and she'll honestly get back to you. Yeah. And if you're interested in doing Reiki 1, then here's an opportunity to get the best end of the stick by learning crystals at the same time. Don't waste your time, don't waste your money. Go along and see Pauline. <clears throat> yeah, Thank you. Give you a plug. I'm not doing Thank that you. too often. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, I, I lost my hand to question there a while ago. Now I forgot what I was going to ask you. Um, something to do with the Reiki. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Reiki, Reiki, Reiki. Yeah. So I've been no, doing I, I do the crystal bowls and like sound healings and stuff like that. So I use that with the Reiki just yep. to you know, raise the energy in the room. Um, people seem to react better to the crystal bowl yep. uh, in that it raises their energy and makes it easier to do the Reiki and the healing on them. Yep. So <clears throat> I use how um, does that sort of fit in with your um, with your mediumship? Um, do the crystals sort of enhance what you're doing or are they uh, just another? Um, I actually, I don't, I actually feel that I can do it without the crystals. I just like to have them around. Um, it's just part of who I am. They don't actually make me a better medium or not a better medium. But, um, yeah, mm. but I'm a little bit like you. When I teach Reiki, I have a crystal bowl and I, or I use mm. Tibetan bowls or Tibetan bells to actually lift the vibration before I mean, it helps a lot. Yeah, yeah I, I think it just relaxes people a little bit and raises the energy in the room to, and yeah. it becomes easier to recognize the energy when it's moving. Yeah. Uh, wow, where do we go from here? Um, that's a good question, Roy. I have no idea. Where do we go from here, uh, Paula? I find that um, sometimes uh, people who who are empaths don't know how to protect themselves and they so they actually stay home more and they're like sometimes when I've been out when I was younger I would go out and I'd feel really good about myself like really good in myself and I'd go to someone's house or meet someone and they would go home feeling really great and I'd feel like someone's just chucked something all over me and I feel like crap or I feel really tired. And I'm, I, as I got older, I actually realised that I, I could actually shift that energy away and um, I mm. usually say, if I end up with a headache, if this isn't mine, please take it away to my guides so that I know whether I'm, it's someone else's energy and not my own. And I've learnt to protect myself every time I go out because the thing is that, you know, if you the, su um, the supermarket is one of the worst places to go shopping or in um, a place in like the pubs or going into a bottle shop, the energies in there are really not good. And I have um, went there once before when I was a lot younger to pick up a bottle of wine for my husband's boss for his birthday and I came home with a migraine, like I was just so, I was laying on the floor in the lounge room and I said, you know, I felt like vomiting and stuff like that. And then it just came to me about clearing that energy and uh, making myself feel better. And as soon as I'd done that, it actually went away. So there's a few ways mm. of actually clearing your energy. Um, some people use sprays these days. Um, some people use incense 
or they use a bit of sage, you know, little, you know, you don't have to have a whole sage stick. You can get sage leaves and burn them and just yeah, you know, yeah. burn that sage over you. And mm -hmm. you can buy sage spray and all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of different things that you can use, like sandalwood or sage. Um, I use, mm. If I use sandalwood, I like to use the hand-rolled sandalwood, not the... Not some, not the all the two dollar ones. Sorry, Roy, but some of them aren't the proper sandalwood, and some are. You can get aromatherapy um, incense. You can get nice smelling mm -hmm. incense. But, you know, it's about choosing the ones that resonate with you and that have the proper essence in them, and not just the smell. Yeah, don't don't apologise to me. I'm, I I get the best that I can. That's not yeah. always the greatest thing that's on the, the market. I mean, there are, um, like a aroma, that you were saying, aromatherapy intents and oils, and I would love that stuff. But honestly, if I took that to market, the chances of selling it, non existent. Most people yeah. won't spend more than, you know, five bucks on incense. So um, <clears throat> you get the best yeah, thing you can, that. irrespective of what you're, you're buying. Yeah. Um, you're coming along on the 23rd to the Spiritual and Wellness Fair at Golden Grove. Uh, are you booked up yet? No, I've got a few bookings and I still have a few vacancies, which is um, I usually advertise, start advertising soon that I have a few vacancies and they usually get snapped up pretty quickly, um, which is good. So, yeah, I'll just, you know, I have got some left if people are interested in that. Yeah, Sometimes good. I'll just yeah. roll, roll that through once more just so that people have the chance to, to see that. Yeah. We've got that. Yeah, it's um, unfortunately like the end of the year, there's, uh, for me, it sort of reaches a dead point. You've got, I finished all my fairs pretty much at the end of September and then it's a uh, catch can of all the local markets and all the other gear. So, I take it you'll be heading to whatever market you can find that um, uh, are available I pick, for you? I pick and choose where I go, um, mm. how I feel about it, or the weekends it is. I don't do much in December mm. at all because it's just a more of a dead month for readings. Like So mm. December and January are uh, very hard to get readings. I try and advertise in January that I do the reading's a bit cheaper for that month, so just to get a little bit of income. But then once it comes into February, I go back to my normal price. So in January, my readings are a lot cheaper. Yeah, trying to get the year started in, in a good fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you mentioned um, the shopping centres and the bottle shops as being um, a, a space that, is, is that the negative energy or simply the number of people that are there that causes that flux of energy? Um, I feel in, in bottle shops it's a lot of lot of to do with negative energies. Um, that affects right. me worse. But in the supermarkets, I usually protect myself before I walk in. But I, I manage to always find little old people or people that want to come up to me and tell me all their problems or they've just lost their husband. And stuff like that and I'm going do I have something written on my face that says medium or what do you know what I mean it's like you just seem to attract those type of people to you um, and I do I'm polite and talk to them but I don't say oh your husband's here with you or anything like that I just you know I empathize with how they're feeling and things like that mm. but I just find that you know in the shopping center I like to try and go when there's not a lot of people because I seem to be, you know, Donna go, you've been gone for hours. What have you been doing? Oh, I met this lady today and she was telling me she lost her husband a, long, a while ago, and blah, 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 and telling me all her problems. And he goes, you can't go anywhere without that happening. Like, and, so, and it just seems to happen like that. It's just the people seem to, you know, when you do the spiritual work, it's just that some people just seem to be drawn to you for some reason and they just want to tell you everything. It's yeah, that's bizarre. true enough. Uh, I've seen that in, in a lot of places where um, people have come up and for some unknown reason they just seem to immediately know that this person does that and they will head in that direction and go over and you think, leave me alone. If you want you, know, if you want a reading, surely you need to say, who are you? Can I can contact you? 
I like to have a reading. You know, I don't want to tell you my life story. You haven't got that much time. No, but you know, I've when my husband used to work um, before, like some of the like that would go out for tea or something certain times of the year with the guys, and they mm. would, you know. That Jay, oh, here, can you, you read this? And they would give me their wedding rings. And I'm going, I'm not doing all this stuff. And I, I think what it, when I was younger, I actually did it once. And then this other guy, I went into the ladies' room and spoke to a lady about something that I didn't want to say in front of anybody else because she was yeah. sitting next to me. And then when I got back, one of the other guys gave me a ring. And as soon as I held it, I just said to him, this isn't even your ring. It belongs to someone else. And I said who it was. And I said, and I'm not doing this. Do you work out of hours? And they go, no. I said, well, I don't need that. If you want a reading, come and get one. But, you know, when I was younger, I used to put up with stuff like that and let people take advantage and do things mm. like that. And as I've got older, I've learned, you know, I'm not doing this just to, to be on show or to work, you know, go out to have fun. And then I have to work as well. I'm just not doing it. Yeah, I would think that that's probably a problem with a lot of psychics. Um, they go out and irrespective of whether you go, whether it's a party or a friend's place, if they know that you're doing this sort of thing, I would think that a lot of psychics, mediums, clairvoyants, call them what you will, would have the same problem. It's a case of, here, yeah, can you do this and give a ring or a bit of paper or can you tell me about what's happening in the next six months about work? It's actually something I hadn't considered because it would bugger up your private life, wouldn't it? It does actually, yes. And the thing is, when you're when you're in business, you have to think about how you dress and how you present yourself every time you walk out the door, because mm. that's how people judge you all the time, and not about always about what you do. But if you if I went out sometimes, you know, like a, a singlet top and a skirt and thongs on and and look like a slob walking around the shopping centres, people would go, oh, look at that feral person or something like that. So, you know, mm. when I go out, I have to think about what I'm going to put on. And nine times out of ten, I come home and I chuck my jammies on or put some clothes on that I can go out in the garden with and stuff like that. But I wouldn't dare walk out like that because it's about your presentation all the time. Yeah, it's... It's difficult, I suppose, um, when you're going through that. I mean, I tend to go native when I'm going out because I'm, when I'm doing the either the healings or the, the stuff like that, like you say, you're dressed up in a fashion which says, this is my business, I enjoy my business, please accept me as this being my business. But I, I've gone out uh, a couple of times. I think I've seen you down at the, the shops a couple of times. And yeah. I, I'm in tracky decks. I want, I want to get out of that. You know, I want to relax. I yeah. want to move away. I want to just find a nice, quiet space where I can have a cup of coffee and don't have to worry about who's judging me and who's doing what. Uh, it's a yeah. crazy world. Yeah, it is. A lot of people um, are very judged. Yeah, aren't they? Um, I mm. shouldn't say that. It's being very, being very um, judgmental myself, I suppose. I'm judging other people by the fact that they're judging me. Okay, Karma, come and get me. <clears throat> I've done my bit. Oh. Um, so when you are um, in the mode, so to speak, um, at the, the markets and the fairs and the like, customer comes in, they have a reading, and you no sooner have that person get out of the seat and the seat doesn't even have a chance to get cold and you've got another person in the seat, how do you sort of close off from one customer to the next? Well, when I when a client leaves, I always spray my area so that actually mm. takes their energy out and then I can actually oh. and I actually tune in to the next person. So I ask them their name and then I tune, I have a process that I tune into their energy. And again, I always, oh. I do a bit of palmistry as well um, I started on the weekend doing crystal readings, which worked out quite well. Um, so I started off doing crystal readings, and then I did a bit of palmistry, and then I just drop into the energies. And I don't even use cards 
unless somebody specifically asks for them, it's not something mm. that I do. I'd rather just use my gift than use cards. So do you find that by doing um, like the palmistry and then the crystals and then going to the reading that it, it actually makes it easier, uh, the person calms down or settles in a lot better? Yeah, they do actually. I'm finding that the people were, I found on Sunday when I introduced the crystal readings that the people were more calmer because they're looking through this box of crystals, choosing what they want. And then I, I make them get seven out and then I group them up into their um, chakra centres and then I pick up what's going on in that, that specific area and then I actually go into the palmistry and then I just go into the reading which makes it a lot easier because they're, when they're playing with the crystals, looking for what they want, they're actually getting the energy from them as well, which actually makes mm. them relaxed a bit more because they're looking at the crystals rather than worrying about what I'm going to say. Yeah. And, and if they're picking seven... Oh, sorry, I'm stopping because I can hear myself jumping through this. Um, uh, when they're picking the seven crystals out, <clears throat> if there are a couple of crystals that you can't place into a chakra, that would then tell you that there is either a problem in that area or that area is clear and doesn't need information. Yep. Yeah, I find that. Sometimes it's really interesting because I found, you know, some people on Sunday were picking out all the blue ones or all the orange ones and you know then they'd maybe pick out a couple of other colors but yeah it's interesting because i find that you know sometimes when you pick a lot of blue colors it's about wanting to have that inner peace or not wanting to speak how you really feel or if they or they could be over talkative and they talk too much but not about what they want to say um that's what i was saying before you know sometimes it's about people mm -hmm. not what they're saying but you know, that you get the most information from rather than what they do say. Yeah, it, it's amazing. <clears throat> I must admit that when I'm doing the, um, the bowls, um, somebody will respond to a particular colour. And yeah. for no apparent reason to me, I then know an area that I'm saying, for argument's sake, I might be in doing the orange and the yellow bowl. Yep. And some people say, oh, well, that, that vibrates very heavily in the stomach area. And yep. without knowing why, I don't argue with it or anything like that. I'll say, right, uh, like there's a problem with uh, the liver's not clearing. And yep. I have no idea why I said liver. But yep. to me, it, I've just got this sudden impression that that's what, where the problem is. You, know, you, you need to drink more or whatever. To clear this area and sometimes yeah. they might say oh look this is that feels really nice and you say right well that means that it's balancing out lovely let's move on to the next one <clears throat> so, look, i don't know whether that's the same for you but for me uh i seem to be picking up a lot more intuitively yeah or psychically i'm not sure just by the sheer act of practice yeah well, your brain is a muscle like everything else. So the more you actually mm. practice and do what you need to do, the more it'll actually, um, you know, work better for you. The other thing I'm finding mm. too is that, you know, people have really weird, sometimes have weird thoughts and, beha and beliefs and they, can't, they find it hard to try and move past that belief or move out of that situation. And, you know, what happens is, you know, you might have been having this belief about yourself for 60 years or 50 years. So that's the past mm -hmm. belief released, released resistance, released resistance, and you've got a tendency to go down that path. As soon as something happens, you go down the path that you always go down. And it's hard. Sometimes you just need to learn um, different techniques to actually stop that from happening so that you're not going down that path automatically like you do. Mm. <clears throat> do you find that um, with the crystals and the content of the like the the palmistry or the hand contact and stuff like that, it, it helps to release a lot of those emotions that people are wanting to ask about, but sort of keeping hidden. Yeah, I do. Um, 
I've got a tendency to be able to just tune into how they're feeling or what's going on. And, you know, once I've spoken that, they'll either cry or will talk to me about what, what's there. But nine times out of ten, you're the one that has to say it first and then they're willing mm. to let it go. But sometimes, I do get occasional people that will talk to me about what their real issue is, not the cover-up issue, and um, we can actually move through that with some, um, ad, you know, advice and some some strategies to do that. But, you know, just sometimes it just depends on the people that come. Yeah. Uh, Adina's just dropped in and she was saying she was just talking about um, this very subject this morning, about how our beliefs can sabotage our, uh, our lives and our beliefs. Um, it's, I suppose it's true in, in all cases. If you hold on to something long enough, it um, it just seems to fester. Um, even if you think you've got rid of it, it just sits in the back there until you something happens and you just have to take notice of it again. Uh, yeah. Do you find a lot of that in the in the reading? Yeah, I do. A lot, you know, a lot of people's beliefs aren't even their beliefs. It's been your parents, your aunties, your uncle, your teachers, your friends' belief that they have about you. And when you hear it often enough, you actually then start taking it on and becoming that person and not who you really are. A lot of people lose their own identity due to what's being programmed into them from a very young age. And it's that programming that, you know, is in our, into that muscle where it just keeps going into that one program all the time that needs to be changed. And it's just strategies that you need to do, use to get through those beliefs that you don't longer want or don't even believe, really want to believe them anymore. So in my so family, a lot, a lot of my family was, you know, not um, a lot of us weren't good enough to do anything mm. in my family. So I found it very difficult to do some of the stuff that I do now because I had this, I struggled with the belief of not being good enough. And it's now I don't actually, I, that does rear its head occasionally, but nowhere near like it used to. I would never do anything like this out in public or anything in years got be gone because I would always believe that I wasn't good enough, but now I don't have that belief. I mean, as it does sometimes come up as a bit of an insecurity, but I actually deal with it straight away now rather than allowing it to take over my life. Yeah. Um, with the amount of change that's happening at the moment with um, you've got the indigo children, the crystal children, the rainbow children, it, it's getting younger and younger. What would you be saying to the, the parents of these children when they're saying that they're receiving this information or they're connecting to the crystals or this sort of thing. You got information on them for that? Yeah, I, I actually feel that a lot of this should be encouraged. A lot of people don't like to encourage it. Even if it's their even if the parents believe that it's just a fantasy world, they still need to acknowledge what their children are saying to them and engage with mm. them more, find out what really is going on. You know, some people some kids have imaginary friends and they could be real spirits that they're talking to or they might be imaginary. But if they're imaginary friends and they're not real spirits, then, you know, this child is quite obviously going through something that he feels that he needs to connect to someone else to talk about what's going on and mm. the relationship from the parents need to be changed a little bit. Yeah, I've, I've noticed in the last few markets, that um, there's a lot more children that are tuning in. Um, I guess that's the wrong word. Um, they're already tuned in, and they're we just connected. don't know. We just don't know how to treat them. Um, it's, yeah. it's becoming harder and harder to discern what the best channel is for these children. And in some ways, I'm thankful that they're there. I mean, they are. They're going to be the next lot that's going to carry this forward. Yeah. But in the same token, I feel sorry for the parents because I don't think they know what to do or how to recognise that their children have this ability. 
it just really needs to be nurtured and encouraged, I feel. You know, I've seen parents, you know, kids that really want crystals and the parents have gone, no, 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 you're not having it. It's just a rock or it's just a stone. It's not going to do anything mm -hmm. for you. And I used to get, mm -hmm. I used to sell a lot of crystals, so I used to get a bit soft and I would quite often, if the parents wouldn't let them have the crystal, I would actually just give them a little one to take. And um, not good yeah. for business, but I... I just feel that, you know, if the child has a connection to that crystal, why should you not allow it to have that? You know, it's better than giving them lollies. Yeah, it is. Um, I know it's a tough question, but how would you sort of pass on information to the parents about what to look for to have some idea whether their children are heading in this path or not? Do you have anything on that? Maybe not. I don't know. No, I've, I've, I've noticed kids that are, you know, that have come up and said, I know you, and the parents have gone, no, you can't have. But, you know, mm. maybe they've known me from a past life. How do they know? And, um, you know, sometimes you, I always ask them, oh, how do you know me? Um, you know, and they will say things, and the parents just look like, oh, my God, mm. you know, what are these kids saying? But... You know, they know, they know stuff. And the parents sometimes, one, I think a lot of it is this stigma around mental health and people think that if you do this sometimes in the olden days, they used to think that you had schizophrenia or something like that, where these days it's actually, there's, that stigma is still there. If you tell people that you see dead people or you communicate with spirits, they think you should be in a psych ward. There's still people out there that mm. actually believe that and have kids. So when the kids come in and are actually talking about this stuff, the parents think that they're crazy when they're actually not. They're actually really connecting with whoever they're saying they are. But the parents need to learn it doesn't matter whether they believe in it or not. They need to encourage their children to be able to um, express how they feel. And it doesn't matter whether it's fantasy or not fantasy. It's, you know, it's just how they are in that point in their life or where they are. Hmm. I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm at the point at the moment where I would like to find something which would involve the children so that the parents can recognise that their yeah. children have these abilities, whether it's just, um, you know, bring your kid along and see what they get from the crystals or... Have a have a talk with the medium or something like that. I, it's just I think there are so many young kids out there at the moment that are going through a lot of the the crap that we went through slowly. They're going through now at yeah. a very young age, and uh, I honestly I don't know where to go. But I would like to think of something which could help those children understand that they have a gift and yeah. how they can manipulate. Them. It would be good. Um, I have thought in the past about um, running a, um, a workshop for children, um, Reiki for kids, and actually not being so intense like it usually is with adults. Uh, but I mm. haven't actually got that up and running yet, but I have had the thought of doing that. And I have had the thought also too about, um, you know, having something to do with kids because I, I work a lot with kids with autism and mm. parents that autism, like parents that children have autism because it's um yeah. something that I'm thinking about. So I've considered running something to do with helping children, you know, tap into their psychic ability and things like that. But I just haven't worked out how that's gonna happen yet. Well actually I having said that, I wish you'd have mentioned that. Um probably a month ago, because we had a section at the end of um, Golden Grove where we've now put in a musician to do meditation and song in that area. But it would have been nice to have had something there, uh, which we could have advertised as, you know, uh, Reiki for children, learn Reiki for children or something like that. So I think that would be brilliant. Yeah. Uh, adults could come in, join in, but let the children be the main focus yep. on that. And maybe we could get two or three of us together and um, just talk about crystals and 
maybe let the kids know that if they they're in tune with the crystals, then brilliant. Um, you may or may not have a connection. You may or may not be a crystal healer. You may or may not be something else. But at least yeah. then the children are aware of their options. Yeah. What do you reckon? I think it's a great idea, and I actually think that it will need it would it be beneficial if we run it with a couple of people, because with kids yeah. you have to be a little bit more interactive with them, otherwise they get bored. And at least if there's a couple of people that know what they're doing are getting together. Mm and um, work with these kids, it'll be a lot easier for them to do that. I'm used to yeah. being really quite simple when I'm talking to children because, as I said, I've worked with a lot of kids with autism and the terminology mm. that we normally use, you can't use with those, with those kind of kids. And I've learned to um, connect with them in a different way so that I can energetically work with them and help them through this stuff. Yeah, and it's just dropped in and said, yes, the stall holders kids had a ball with all the energies. So, yeah, yeah, uh, it's not just um, this last. We're sort of coming to a close, but um, I think we'll just uh, promote, see how you're going, and we will promote your going down to Golden Grove again, and I'll put up your... Um, web page again there we go um if anybody is tuning in on the replay please give pauline a message from that site pauline grubbin team and let her know that you're interested in having a reading or doing some energy work or whatever with pauline and um she'll be down at the golden grove art center on the 23rd of september the spiritual and wellness fair that's going to be happening up there 10 until four o'clock i like to be different everybody wants to finish at three i like to finish at four so we'll go from 10 until four and i would like to thank you immensely for your time and energies today pauline and we had no technical difficulties so it's brilliant we managed to get through and your energy right. helpers have stayed quiet so yep. thank you very much for coming on today. It's been brilliant. Thank you. All right. You're more than welcome. Bless. And I'll catch I'm, you later. I'm, yeah, I'll put you down into the uh, into the lobby section. I'll just close in and close off, and then I'll come back to you. All right? Yep, that'll be fine. Lovely. Thank you. Boom, boom. Okay, so people, so if you're interested in any of the things that uh, Pauline is doing, um, then drop her a message on that. Uh, if you're interested in the um, idea of children having some sort of activity that they can learn uh, about the energies, about crystals, about any of that, leave us a message in the comments so that we can, we can see whether there is interest and we might be able to do um, even an event with a couple of other people and see what we can organize live. Uh, but we would need people who have children who are, they think would be interested in doing something like that. But uh, it's been an absolutely excellent um, interview with Pauline and hopefully we'll get her back at some point to do some more because I know she likes to do the occasional reading. Well, we like to do it during the day just to get those people that can't tune in when I try and stuff to work with. In any case, my name is Roy Fenton. I run Moon and Mask, and I also do the, the spiritual and wellness fairs around Adelaide. And I wish you well, and I hope the sun is always on your back and keeping you warm. Namaste, and greetings to all. Tune in for a couple more interviews that are coming up in the next couple of weeks, but they will be advertised either on MyTimeTV.live or on MyTV Live World Spirit. So, whoop. Uh, yeah, crystals with the tin lids. Thank you very much, Annette. I know you'd be in it because we'll probably have to get you to explain the crystals, but uh, you're on my list of people to talk with. Thank you very much, people. It's been great to see you. It's been great to tune in. I'm going to drop off now, so...
uh, please pass this on to people in the replay so that we can encourage more people to join in. Thank you very much.